Um, okay, great. So this is our Empathy Circle work group and everyone gets 15 minutes to talk about their experiences with the facilitating and Nellie's going to be sharing. Take it away, Nellie. And the clock is running. I, I think I don't need 15 minutes. I will okay. just, uh, yeah. Um, there was the German XR uh, region um, group uh, did organize uh, an empathy circle and they made a lot of advertisement for it. <laughs> and they also had a journalist of a large uh, newspaper um, join that. And um, <laughs> the first thing which I want to note is that I, uh, I, I learned that this was happening by not by looking at the XR homepage or communication channels, but by somebody who is part of XR Germany and who told me that it's gonna happen. And this is something which is, um, yeah, um, part of the support system which I have. Um, this gave me the opportunity to to become aware of uh, this happening and then I decided to to go to that meeting um, and I um, uh, I didn't yet know if I would have a babysitter um, and uh, so yeah and when I when I came to the meet to the group, it was maybe fifteen people, about fifteen people, and I did uh, know two of them from my support circle group, and that was um, feeling very comfortable for me, because I had talked to them several hours in the last couple of weeks, so, um, and I did know some of the others as well from work group meetings. Uh, but that was a uh, much less um, safe space for me with the others. I just had seen them several times, but I didn't have really confidence that I would. Yeah. And, and then, um, yeah, because we were so many, there was a discussion if, if there would be a possibility that, um, that uh, um, we have uh, two people already had agreed to facilitate and, and then I said, yeah, I can also facilitate. And yeah. Uh, and yeah, I think the only way why I was able to do that was because I really did know the people or many of the people already. So it was only the second time I had done such a facilitator role. Yeah. And yeah. And then, um, yeah. Well, when I when I was in in the room, we we um, I asked for somebody else to to take the time and yeah. Uh, and it was not such a, uh, hmm. it wasn't difficult to to get or I wasn't really so very. F um, keen on keeping the structure and but we were just four people and, and it was really easy and it was not any topic like in, in the what what Edwin in the hospitals bringing it's it was yeah nobody was severely traumatized in this room so <laughs> yeah that's another category yeah hmm. So that's my experience. And I, I don't know if I would be capable of, of doing a really 
difficult uh, topic with, with people who are very much on their in their own uh, uh, burdened by their uh, uh, acute pain of, of seeing people die. Carolina has a question. Do you want to? Uh, I'm curious. You said something like. Uh you felt comfortable to facilitate because you knew people so yes. you feel like you don't feel comfortable to facilitate for people you don't know that's what you mean um i feel comfortable when other people i have great trust are together with me in the room and there were two people which i had never met before also in my group mm -hmm. and one uh, who uh, I did know and trust, so that already was sufficient. What I mean, I love to have a co-facilitator, even it, it, if it's only a timekeeper, mm, but yeah. it makes me feel more confident. For example, Marta supports me in open region call, and I with pleasure support her in other calls. I, my role might be nothing, just being there. But it is important to have somebody else and mm. it gives a lot of confidence and calm. I feel mm. much better when there is one more facilitator who, who just is there. That's yeah. my experience. Mm. Yeah, I do share that. <laughs> yeah. Then I think uh, Edwin and then Lou. Yeah. Um... Was this a formal empathy circle? I hadn't heard of these in, in Germany. So were they having breakout rooms and small groups it doing kind of a... To... <laughs> what? It was close to what you are doing here. Mm -hmm. um, but it was the first time they did it in mm -hmm. such a large group. And we were improvising a lot. We, we, on the fly, I did a sign as a... I, I might lead, uh, I might facilitate a subgroup and... We had, we actually used my own Zoom room for doing my group and we joined the other Zoom room again afterwards because nobody was feeling uh, familiar with the uh, breakout rooms yet. But it, mm. we were all very relaxed because of this confidence and the, the knowing each other part. Mm. I think this also was visible for the journalist and I'm really proud of this part because, yeah, we, we were in a difficult situation and nobody was really feeling uh, he knows everything and has done this a lot of times. But because we were a group of people who were trusting each other, we, we could handle it. Um, yeah, I was curious um, what parts of the Empathy Circle process you decided to let go of and what parts you kept and what uh, kind of a uh, difference you thought that made? Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really let go of it. I just didn't, um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I spoke up when I noticed that we deviate and I told them, hey, we are deviating and um, I'm absolutely fine with that if you wish to do this. But I also have discovered for myself that the process has some value. And um, I, I, this is the value I see in the process. So I want to ask you, do you want to, um, uh, do you also see value in this? And then they <laughs> just went along with the process. <laughs> so. And so did they, um, so the things that they didn't do, was it, that they didn't spread the listening around or they didn't do reflection? Like, did they not reflect each other or what, what things kind of changed? Hmm. I think um, so something I even did was I, somebody was um, shared and, and the other reflected and um, they were almost um, ready to, to finish and, and, and then I, I had uh, remembered that something was missing from the reflection. And I said, can I add some reflection to it? Because I think it's important. It's important to me. And the other said, yes, okay, let's deviate from the process. And, and I just uh, 
added this little part of reflection, which I had seen and everybody was happy with that. So that was one thing which made it more happy for me to joyful for me to be there because no, yeah. <laughs> So actually, that's I would say that's something I do as a facilitator, and actually I s explain that to the group that I might do that when I do the introduction, is that if somebody uh, is speaking and the reflector doesn't reflect back something that seems like an important part of what they're saying, and they don't say, uh, well, and maybe they don't say, well, you missed this part, or... Um, and they look unsatisfied to me with a reflection. So it's like, yes, the person didn't get it and they wish they did. That's my, my perception is they wish they did, but they're not willing to say that. Then I will sometimes say, well, and I also heard this, you know, just so that piece is reflected. I think that's one of the roles of the facilitator is to help things that are important get heard if they are not heard by the, um, by the, uh, reflector. The other, the other time I'll do that is when the reflector has made two or three attempts to hear something and they're still not hearing it. And rather than letting the frustration grow, then I will say, I think I'm hearing this. Is this what you're saying? Um, I'll do it then also. Mm -hmm. So I hear that you are um, seeing this as a, uh, a function the facilitator can uh take care of mm -hmm. um to, to help over uh, situations when it gets uncomfortable um because somebody sh who's sharing is not heard uh, and somebody who's reflecting is getting in panic because oh i can't do this <laughs> and you can pay, put a bit of pressure out of this situation yeah, you have to, uh, I do it judiciously because I also don't want people to feel like I'm correcting them. Mm. And if every, you know, if every time someone misses a little something, I'm like, I'm in there correcting, you know, making sure that everything is heard. That's not good either because you don't want people to feel like they're being corrected all the time. Mm. So I, I only do it if I think it's really important. Mm -hmm. So you have noticed that uh, if you are constantly doing that, the people lose their, uh, stamina to try themselves <laughs> and uh, it's they feel like children and it's right. not yeah. yeah two minutes left i would like to say that i uh, i see why you are doing this as a facilitator but um if you have more people who are good in reflecting i wouldn't want this to be limited to be done by the facilitator but I would like to have, sorry, Karen, <laughs> but uh, I would like to do this as um, by everyone, every group member is important, uh, has, has responsibility to, it can take its responsibility to, to step up if, if something is not working out well. And so I don't like this position of one facilitator and um, yeah, the others are, um, yeah, <laughs> but the, I think the time limit is too short. We have to stop here. And yeah, Carolina, do you want to say anything or? I just want to say that um, I actually prefer to to let people do small mistakes, and I usually do not. Maybe once it happens to me that I intervene in a reflecting that was really bad and helped the active listener to, to reflect and encourage to try once more and once more. But I, I'm i not afraid being incomplete after empathy circle. And I like this, okay, there will be next empathy circle and next empathy circle. Yes. And it will be kind of constant practice and it's okay to not have the last word. It's not, it is okay to say to, to to not say everything mm -hmm. i i kind of accept that and like to build that kind of culture through facilitation yeah actually that was the first thing i said because i when i started speaking i i said oh i 
I I am so happy to that now I have learned how to, I can make mistakes and not feel bad about it, <laughs> at least not long. <laughs> and that's uh, the end, probably. That is, that's the time. Thanks. That was